when all the genocides took place, be it the Armenian genocide, the Holocaust, the Rwandan genocide, the Tutsi genocide, when people see it coming, they don't want to get involved. Our human nature always tends to get away from his responsibility. We tend to close our eyes and ears. We tend to turn our backs and look away because we are running away from our own responsibilities. I stopped closing my eyes the very day when the president was killed. The army, the militias, took machetes, guns, and everything, started butchering civilians. The first people to be killed were politicians, opposition politicians, and also some high-ranking businesses, business people. And then immediately, it was Tutsis. Every Tutsi was supposed to be killed. The whole world decided to pull out, to abandon a whole nation to thieves, thugs, looters. So without any witness, Rwandans killed the Rwandans. I see so many parallels between Paul Rusesa Bagina and Raoul Wallenberg, the Swedish diplomat who was responsible for saving my father's life during the Holocaust. Both of these brave men somehow found a way to create and to defend small islands of relative safety and peace in the midst of the hell that was raging around them. Raoul Wallenberg with the safe houses that he established in Budapest where my father took refuge. Paul at the Hotel Milkolin in Kigali. The hotel was a kind of small island, yeah. a small oasis of kind of peace, relative peace, as compared to what was happening outside. I say relative peace because even despite what happened, many attacks on the hotel, no one was killed, no one was taken out to be disappeared, to be tortured outside the hotel. Neither one of them were soldiers. They didn't have or use guns to defend the innocent people who were sort of put in their charge for whom they had responsibility. They used their words, sometimes pleading, sometimes calming, occasionally threatening. But I just think about the unbelievable courage it took to deploy words and persuasion and small courtesies in the face of machine guns and machetes. Words can be the best and the worst weapons in a human being's arsenal. I like to solve my conflicts, or to solve whatever I'm solving with words rather than guns. One gets the sense that sometimes it was just this kind of quiet dignity that he had that somehow had the power to push off the impending destruction for just one more day. I was very much scared, but I learned one of the most important lessons throughout my life. I learned how to deal with evil. I have come to believe that each and every heart has a very small spot. Whatever heard, however heard it might be, it has a small spot which is soft. So it is my duty it is your duty to go and look for that small spot and deal with it.
There is something so inspiring about a person being willing to interpose themselves between murderous killers and innocent, helpless victims. And I think that when we see that or hear of that, each of us finds ourselves asking the question, would I have the courage? Would I have the strength? Would I have the, the decency and the, and the humanity to do that myself? In my life, I have learned to listen to the only best advisor. And that best advisor is my own conscience. My father used to tell me that, listen, my dear boy, if you happen in your life to see two brothers or sisters fighting, and you are supposed to separate them. Come, stand in the middle. Do never make a mistake of looking to your left hand side because you might be influenced by the, this eye looking at you. Do never look at your right hand side. Just look up and say the truth. <laughs>